Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Excel to perform a series of calculations. We learned about how when electrons move down in energy levels, they release energy. The bigger the energy levels it jumps down, the more energy it releases. This relationship is summarized in this equation right here. So we have the electron starting in a certain position, finishing at a certain position, and the bigger this jump is, the more energy it's going to release. And that's represented by this. This is the change in energy. This is how much energy level it jumps down. This is how much energy the atom releases or emits. These two values give us a constant, and the constant is symbolized RH. It's called the Rydberg constant. We're going to use Excel to plug in our data to calculate this value. So here's the file. We have the three colors that you measured with the hydrogen light bulb. I just made up some values here. So the goal here is to start with these wavelengths, correct them using the um, calibration that we did at the beginning, turn it into frequency, turn the frequency into energy, and then turn that into the change in energy. And then over here, this is where we're going to calculate that, that change in energy level. So there's going to be a couple of steps. We're going to break this up into steps. We're going to call all of this business over here change in N. And then finally, we can calculate our Rydberg constant. We're going to get one for each of the light colors, get an average, and then calculate percent error. So that's what we're doing overall. All right, so let's start back at the beginning. I have some wavelengths that I made up, but you want to put your wavelengths right here. Then we're going to correct the wavelength by using that average error value that we got in lab. So we can have Excel calculate that. I'm going to pretend that my average value is negative 17 nanometers. So that's the number I'm going to use here. So what you do to put in an equation, you start by typing equals. If you want to use a certain value in an equation that's in a cell, you click on it. So I'm going to click on that one. Then I'm going to subtract 17 from it and hit enter. And there we go. Now, oops. Now, you don't have to do that again here. All you have to do is you click on that cell, you go to the corner, it will turn into this plus sign, you click and drag like that, and it applies it all the way down the column. All right, let's go to the next one. Now, we're going to take the corrected wavelength in nanometers and convert it into the corrected wavelength in meters. So to do that, there are 1 billion nanometers in one meter. So that means we have to take these numbers and divide them by a billion. In scientific notation, a billion with a B is 1 times 10 to the ninth. So what I'm going to do, just like before, is start by typing equals, click on that value, divided by a billion. Now here's a shortcut. You can put scientific notation here. All you do is you do 1 E, that stands for times 10 to the, and then all you have to put in is the exponent, which in this case is 9, because that's a billion. All right, then you hit enter, and you do your click and drag down. There you go. Okay, go back. Now to get frequency. The way we get frequency is we take the speed of light, the speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth. That's the speed of light, and that's in meters per second. So meters per second. So what I want to do is take the speed of light divided by the wavelength. That gives us the frequency. Okay, equals speed of light is 3e8 divided by the wavelength, 
enter. So this number is reasonable. The frequency of light is on the order of times 10 to the 14th power. So this number, although it's really big, actually makes sense. Drag down. There we go. All right. Next step. This is where we're going to use a constant. The energy and the frequency are proportional to each other. As the frequency goes up, the energy goes up. So there's a constant associated with that. So we're going to use that constant. So here's what you do. To get the energy of light, you take the frequency times this constant. Um, the value of this constant is 6.63 times 10 to the negative, oops, negative 34. That's known as Planck's constant. So we're going to use it. To get the energy of the light, it's the frequency times that constant. So equals frequency times 6.63 e negative 34. Enter. All right, there we go. Moving along. Oops, did it again. Change in energy of the atom. This is a pretty simple calculation. This is just telling which direction the energy is, go, is going in respect to the atom. Now the energy is leaving the atom. So when energy is leaving the object that you're studying, we give it a negative sign. So all we're going to do is take these numbers and just make them negative. It's as easy as that. So all you do is equals minus, click on the value, hit enter. And you'll see all it did was it just put a negative sign in front of it. All right, drag it down. All right. So basically what we have here, this is the numerator of that equation from earlier. This is what we've got, the numerator. Now we're going to work on the denominator, and then we're going to divide them. All right, so let's do that. We're going to break this up into chunks. Already filled in are the starting energy levels. Like for the first color, the red, it starts on the third energy level. It finishes on the second. The second color starts on the fourth, also finishes on the second. And then the third color starts on the fifth and once again finishes on the second level. So what we're going to do here is take the starting energy level and square it. Pretty easy to do. So you can either do this in your head and type it or I'll show you how to do it just in case. So if you want to square this number, you click equals that number and you have to put in the little caret. Um, it's above the number six. So you hit shift six, there it is. And then we want to square it. So two, enter. There we go, three squared is nine. All right, go down the column. All right, then we're gonna take this number and put it on the denominator on the fraction with the number one on the top. All right, so what you do is you take one divided by that number Whoops, I'm sorry, I forgot the equal sign. So equals one divided by that number, enter. Go down. All right, so this, this makes sense. This pattern makes sense because these numbers are going on the bottom of a fraction. And as the number on the bottom of a fraction gets bigger, the answer gets smaller. All right, I'm going to scroll down here. And we're going to do the same exact thing, no different at all, except actually it's going to be a little bit easier because now we have two and we want to square it. So two squared is four and it's the same number. So four, four. All right. Then we have to put one over this number here. So one over four, one divided by that number, 0.25. One over four is 0.25. All right. We are almost there. So now what we're going to do is get the change from the start to the finish. So what I'm going to do is this number minus this number, this number minus this number, and this number minus this number. Okay, equals that minus that, enter, negative, that's, that makes sense, goes down, there you go. All right, we're almost there. Now we're going to get the Rydberg constant. 
So to do this, we're going to use that change in energy value that's all the way back here, this number, and we're going to divide it by this number. So equals the change in energy, so you have to scroll back. You want change in energy of atom, click on that, divided by, okay, so I hit divided by, um, the change in n. There it is. Okay, that number makes sense. It should be on the order of 10 to the negative 18. And you click and drag down. There you go. All right, to get an average, Excel can do averages. You're going to do equals, and then start typing the word average. Okay, see it right there? Now, press tab. So Excel is asking, which numbers do you want to use in your average? We want to use these ones. So you highlight them, you hit enter, and there's our average. Finally, we're going to get percent error. So to get percent error, it's the difference between the average value and the accepted value. The accepted value is this, 2.179 times 10 to the negative 18. We're going to get the difference between them, divide by the accepted, so this is the accepted, accepted RH, and I'm just going to do that. Uh, that's the accepted value. So the difference divided by the accepted times 100 is your percent error. So that's what we're going to do. Now it's got absolute value in it. A percent error is it has it absolute value. So here's what you do. Equals a, B, S for absolute value, open parentheses, this number minus the accepted, close parentheses, divided by the accepted, so you click on the accepted, whoops, um, I'm going to go back up here, so divided by the accepted, and then times 100. Okay, 1.25%, not too bad. Usually if you're um, either less than 10% or 5%, that's, that's generally pretty good. So my data are pretty good. Now for sig figs, what you have to do is look back to see how many significant figures are in your original measurement. So there they are. Now, if you need to adjust how many significant figures are being shown here, you can do that. So this has three significant figures. We're going to go over here to the frequency. I want this to have three significant figures as well. This has one, two, three, four, five, six. I have to get rid of some. So I'm going to highlight these. And what you do is you go up here. And this might be a little bit different on the version of Excel that you have, but it should still look similar. You have these values, these buttons right here. These will move the decimal. So what I want to do is actually get rid of some digits. So I'm going to click this so it gets rid of that last digit. Click it again, and then finally there. Now I have three significant figures. So what you want to do is go through and make sure that you have three significant figures in these measurements. The n values don't worry about. Those are not the measurements. Um, don't worry about it um, here. But you want to change it when you have the Rydberg constant and the average Rydberg constant. You'll need to adjust your significant figures there. All right, and that is how you use Excel to do calculations.